Hello and welcome back to my channel about movie novelizations. Today I have something slightly different. This is a novelization from the cartoon series called Mask, and this is from the first episode called The Death Stone uh, by Kenneth Harper. I don't intend to cover children's books too much in the future, however, this one cropped up because, as some of you may know, I am friends with, I recently got in contact with a old school friend who is known to some of you as Monkey Boy's Toys. We got into the conversation of what we were up to and he mentioned that he's been collecting mask toys, which then triggered a memory in my mind that I did once own this particular, particular book, which I never actually read as a child. I never had total interest in any re in reading at the time, even though this is very easy to read. I think it was a, a gift from a family member, perhaps. So this is it. This is the Death Stone. There are several uh, several of these in uh, been released. This is uh, published by Night Books, <clears throat> and I do believe they are also published in sort of German and Spanish as well. Now. One of the features of novelizations is that many of the some authors write under pseudonyms, and Kenneth Harper is a pseudonym for a writer called Keith Miles, who I believe also wrote screen uh, screenplays for uh, Archer, the Archers and Crossroads, as well as his own sort of series of mystery novels. But under the pseudonym of Kenneth Harper, he also wrote a, um, a, a few three novelizations for the cartoon The Real Ghostbusters. So Mask was created by Kenner Toys, and to me, you know, appears to be sort of a, a bit like a cross between G.I. Joe and Transformers, in that you've got a figure to play with as well as a vehicle that used to transform. On here on the front cover here we have an illustration or sort of a graphic of the uh of the cartoon, uh, Thunderhawk there, which was a uh, car that turned into a jet plane, and you've got uh, Switchblade, which was a helicopter uh, jet plane that used to just transform into a into a helicopter for its disguise mode. And like many cartoons of the eighties, it was uh, the cartoon was created to market the toys, and it worked, and also had quite a fab theme to him, which is another. Another 80s thing, really. <clears throat> but the story was basically a simple story of uh, a battle between a crime-fighting task force known as MASK, Mobile Armoured Strike Command, Command with a K, against a criminal organisation called Venom, which, if I'm rightly, stood for uh, Fisher's Evil Network of Mayhem. So, yeah, like I said, there was about eight titles of these, all based on... Uh, different ep uh, episodes of the cartoon. Uh, we have here novelization by Kenneth Harper, published by Night Books, and then on the side here we do have a picture of the initial sort of release of the of some of the characters you've got here, sort of the Venom Venom uh, characters here in their masks and uh, the good guys of Mask and their their masks and the name. Each mask had a different, uh, different sort of uh, special function. I do notice that the uh, character of Hondo doesn't really get a mask. He gets a hat with a little visor on it, but you know, he seems to be shortchanged. However, there is a link below, and I'm just going to go into the reason why that might be in a little bit. So this is a children's book, so the narration is rather basic. However, still an enjoyable read, I suppose, if you're when you're a child or even maybe a fan. So after watching the uh, original episode, which I've also included a link at the bottom for, uh, there was a few differences, even in this sort of short little book. One of which is I discovered what the uh, I discovered the name of T Bob. It's actually short for uh, Thingamy Bob, which I didn't actually know. As well as another little interesting thing, which I never realised, is that the uh, character of Scott Tracker, 
the boy there you can see in the picture there, rather bad, bad picture of him. He apparently is um, referred to in this in this as being adopted. I always thought he was the actual son of Matt Tracker, but it would apparently, according to this, he's adopted, which would probably explain why he's so annoying and his father isn't. Another uh, difference that I immediately noticed was that in the cartoon, most of the, all of the vehicles fire en some sort of energy weapon, a laser, or or such. However, reading this, they are explained as being uh, as firing shells and bullets. I wonder if that was a change that was made, sort of at the last moment, to sort of lessen the violence and make it a bit more, you know, a little bit less realistic in one sense for children. I don't know. Another little thing that I found was watching the cartoon and uh, reading the book is that Internet Movie Database lists it as a continuity goof, but when you read the novelization, you realise it isn't. But within at the beginning of the of the, of the cartoon of this episode, the character of Cliff Dagger is shown holding a remote control, which, when watching the cartoon, you think that he's actually controlling the UFO that appears. In the uh, in the cartoon, but in actual fact, in the book, it explains that the remote control was used to set off the lights and the um, to set off the lights and scramble the uh, nearby cars into fooling people into thinking it was a UFO landing and making the cars car alarms and lights go off. When in actual fact, it was a not a real UFO. It was a it was actually venom and a switchblade inside it. Another little thing, so onto Hondo's mask, it would appear that this character went through several changes between the cartoon and the production of the toys. I have included a link uh, below by Retro Blasting Channel called The Trouble with Hondo, which covers it a bit more. But reading the novelization, it does explain that the uh, Hondo's mask blaster contains an in internal guidance system for shoulder mounted lasers. So instead of actually firing lasers from the visor, like it does in the cartoon, it would appear that it was meant to have shoulder-mounted ones, which if you look at the old toys of the uh, of the mask of Hondo McLean, you'll see that there are sort of shoulder-mounted sort of housing, which indicates that this is so, but was changed for some reason. Maybe it was down to easier for the animators to do. Who knows? But for whatever reason, it was changed and dropped. I sometimes wonder if it was changed because of the movie Predator and it was too similar to a shoulder-mounted laser in that sense, but I don't think the times match up in terms of, I think, Mask came out just before Predator, or was around about the same time, so who knows. I don't know how much the uh, these sort of novelizations are regarded as canon. I do believe that there was, at the time, DC Comics released a comic strip or a set of comics at the time that Mask was about. I think that has a little bit more backstory, such as uh, Scott uh, Matt Tracker sorry, had a brother who was murdered by, by Miles Mayhem. Obviously, there's nothing, nothing like that appears in this book, not for children, but I do understand that the, uh, the comics did have a little bit more. And uh, also, it was really... That comics were re-released recently by IDW Comics in 2016. And that is it for now. Not really much else to say. So I'll finish on a, on some questions, but uh, I don't know if uh, mask toy collectors are interested in the backstory or whether they just they have the love of the toys that they collect or <clears throat> is it just about the ownership of them? I don't know. You have to let me know in the comments. And feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.